Hello, everybody. This is a Lamley Saturday Showcase. I took last Saturday off, so it's time to get back to it. And we're going to show some interesting models to be sure today. But the models we're going to be theming today, one and duns. This Nissan Skyline C210 is not one of them, but I thought it would be a good way to start. Because it is new to the range. It was in Japan Historics 2, part of car culture. Unique model to be sure, but I think we can all feel pretty confident that we're going to see this one again. That cannot be said for some of these. Like I said, we're talking about Hot Wheels 1 and Duns. Those castings that appeared once maybe had a recolor. You may or may not consider that a 1 and Done. And then vanished, and we don't know what happened to them. Maybe we'll see them again. Maybe we won't. I've accumulated some of them from my collection. There's a billion more, and that's why I want you to make comments down below. What models do you have that are one and done? What are those that you can think of? And let's try and accumulate some of the famous one and dones from Hot Wheels. Let's get to it. Okay, one and done. What are these one and dones? Well, they're models that Hot Wheels developed, made, released, and then stopped making them for whatever reason. We can talk about them as we, as we go through these models. And let's start with this one, the Koenigsegg Gera. This one was in the Need for Speed Hot Wheels uh, entertainment line. It showed up once, and it hasn't shown up again. Will we see it again? I, maybe. Do we know why we haven't seen it again? No. Could be a licensing issue. Could be something else. Maybe some of you know. Um, and can fill us all in. But this is one of those. And this is the type of models where, uh, that I'm talking about. They were there, and then they were gone. This is one of the most famous. And this is one of the most unique. This is the Alfa Romeo BAT9. I cannot remember what BAT stands for. Call it the Bat9. Looks kind of like a bat, maybe a Batmobile. This was released, I believe, in 2006 in the basic range for Hot Wheels. Maybe you've seen this, maybe you haven't. But is it not the weirdest looking car? Kind of futuristic, clearly a concept car from Alfa Romeo. There are clearly stories behind the makings of some of these models, like what prompted a designer to want to make it, what prompted Hot Wheels to do it. Just released in the basic range, it wasn't made for any special line or anything. It was just there, and we've never seen it again. And maybe with Alfa Romeo you know, back licensing with Mattel, maybe we'll see it again. But we have not seen it for at least 10 years. And we haven't seen this one for almost 15. This is the Maserati Quattroport. I probably said that wrong. From 2004, this was about the time I started collecting seriously again, meaning I was going and visiting the pegs. And it seemed like every store you'd go to for a good three or four years, there would always be one of these hanging there. Maybe on a beat up, messed up card, but it was there. It must have been one epic peg warmer when it first was released. Just wasn't a Hot Wheels collector thing at the time. Must have been where the collectors were more into muscle at the time and some other type of tuned cars or something, but this one just didn't connect. Might now. It's a nice casting. It's a little, lacks a little bit of detail, I think, but ultimately, I think collectors today would look at that and say, that is a very good looking model. But we know what happened here. This is the Ferrari 250 California from Hot Wheels Entertainment. It was Ferris, the Ferris Bueller Ferrari, the famous Ferris Bueller Ferrari, which technically in the movie wasn't a Ferrari, but this is a replica of a Ferrari. The only reason we haven't seen this one again, and it is gorgeous, is because soon after the release of this model, the Ferrari license pew, vanished. It was gone. Mattel lost it. And I'm sure they had this set for other premium ranges. Can you imagine seeing this as a, as a classic in a classic European style car culture? Or, I mean, you could you name it. There were plenty of places for this model to be used. But we only have one. Yeah, the steering wheel is a little bland. The interior is a little bland. But this is a gorgeous, gorgeous model. And this one's purely a casualty of a licensing agreement gone bad. But here's one I feel like we will see again. This is the 67 Plymouth Belvedere GTX. Made for Hot Wheels Entertainment a few years ago. I think it was for Tommy Boy. Soft, soft top, but it is a metal top, but it's, you know, obviously casted to look like a soft top. Because if it wasn't, a deer would have a hard time poking its head through it, right? I think I'm remembering that correctly from the movie. Nonetheless, 
Very, very cool car. Very, very cool casting. And we've only seen it the one time. So I'm assuming this is one if I had to predict we'd see again, it would. this one seems absolutely logical. We just haven't. Here's another one I hope we see again from Boulevard. This is the Vector W8 Twin Turbo. I've showcased this one before when I showcased all of the Bo Boulevard models. This one was such a surprise, like the Alfa Romeo B89. This one came completely out of left field. Probably some passion, kind of a passion project for one of the Hot Wheels designers. Really, really nice casting, really, really unique car. Seems like it would have a place in car culture, although I would be fearful that it would be a peg warmer compared to some of the other cars in whatever release that would be, but, you know, something to think about. Only seen it once, never seen it again. Unique to be sure, but completely lost in history, this model, and this car in general, right? So maybe it would be hard to, uh, to justify producing this again for any sort of premium line. Here's one that I debated whether or not to put it on the one and done list because it was not released that long ago. It is the Nissan Concept 2020 Vision GT, something like that. Made by Nissan for Gran Turismo. It's a concept car for the Gran Turismo game. We've seen this done by Tomica Limited Vintage, by Majorette, and by Hot Wheels. And I don't ever need to see it again. So the castings are interesting. They're cool. The car is not. Um, I think it's, you know, I'm, I have the Tomica Limited Vintages. But I decided to put this in the one and done because this was one that, where are we going to put this one again? I guess you could put it in a Deco in the basic range, but we don't need to see this thing in a premium range again. But cool to have. I definitely put it in the collection. You guys might love it. Um, but like the BAT and maybe the Vector, interesting to have, and that made me keep it. I just don't think we need to see it in another color. Here is another one that, for various reasons, I don't know if we'll see again. This is the Toyota 2000 GT convertible. Now, the story behind the actual car is Toyota never did a 2000 GT convertible, but they were using the 2000 GT in a James Bond movie. Sean Connery got in the car. He couldn't fit, so they decided to turn it into a convertible, and Hot Wheels decided to do a very nice replica of it for the entertainment line. Now, if you've noticed, there ain't no Toyota licensing right now for whatever reason so for that reason we're not going to see a, this again at least for now until they work out the licensing stuff and maybe they have maybe they haven't but i also don't know if we'll see a convertible toyota 2000 gt that toyota would approve if it wasn't for james bond so do we see this replicated in the entertainment line sometime if the toyota license is back maybe but do we see it in the basic range is it just a 2000 gt convertible my guess is from a license, licensing perspective, we don't. Plus, they have the actual 2000 GT casting. That makes more sense. Okay, this is where we can get a little loose on the definition of one and done. This is the Dodge Challenger from Vintage Racing. I have showed this, what, just a couple weeks ago when I did the Vintage Racing Showcase, by the way. I just completed my Vintage Racing collection. I'll do that showcase later. Um, but we've seen this Challenger casting before, but we haven't seen it with this big, ridiculous... Um, but very cool chin on the front. So made exclusively and specifically for vintage racing because it's a replica of this actual Dodge Challenger, Sam Posey's Challenger. I don't know if we'll see it again. As is, I think, this one. This is the 70 Camaro RS. If you look and look up 70 Camaro RS from Hot Wheels, you will see several releases but I think this one from Vintage Racing is the only one with that massive intake on the front. That's the only difference in this casting. I think it, like the Challenger, it was done specifically for Vintage Racing, but never used again. I feel like I could have been wrong, but I've kind of searched through eBay and other places trying to find one that has this huge intake, and I can't. Okay, now here are the others that I think might be a little bit more loosely defined as one and dones because they actually had recolors the year they were released, but we haven't seen them since. This is the Aston Martin DB4 GT Zagato, made for Hot Wheels Classics. This is the actual chase version. They did chase versions with um, real riders on them. I only have this one, but it was also colored in red. So there were two versions, one chase, um, but all from one release and just, and then two colors, of course. So 
Maybe not officially a one and done because there was a recolor, but I think it is, for this case, I think it does qualify because we only saw them in that one year in Hot Wheels Classics and we haven't seen it since. Another one that would probably work really well with like that Ferrari and some sort of classic European themed car culture um, release, but who knows? Same goes for this one. This is the Audi TTS from Speed Machines. Such a beautiful casting. So perfectly done. And just never to be seen again. Hot Wheels has the Audi license. We know that there's that Audi R8 race car coming in, um, in the next batch of car culture. I don't know if we're going to see anything update. Well, we also know that the Audi RS6 is coming to the main line. And it's going to be a super treasure hunt, but I don't know uh, if there's any plans for this TTS. It's absolutely beautiful. Three colors, of course, silver and red, which I'm showing you too in this little feature. So, one and done, technically no, because there are three colors, but only for speed machines, never to be seen again. Other models that were debuted there, like the McLaren, like the Ferrari 599XX, have shown up elsewhere. This Audi never has. Okay, here's one maybe you didn't expect to see, but based on that definition, it is technically a one and done. It is the Ferrari La Ferrari in red. We also know that it was recolored in silver. And we obviously know why this one would be considered a one and done. Like the Ferrari 250 California, just bad timing, I guess. But at least it made it out. At least we have two colors, and we may never see it again. To be honest, I'm not that fond of this casting. It's a little too boxy for me. Uh, maybe because of the large rear wheels, it seems to be off a little bit. Still, it's become a bit of a sought-after casting because there's only two of them, and it was only released once. And we finish with this, a severely underrated casting from Hot Wheels, something that was released once vanished we've never seen it again and it is crazy cool this is the mini countryman i believe it's the countryman released in 2011 2012 i think first in green then in red or vice versa but check out the details on this the casting itself has a ton of details it's a rally style it has Deco on the sides, on the top, on the rear. It just doesn't have headlights. But other than that, those J5 white wheels look so cool. Really, really cool casting. And gone! Could it show up somewhere like in, uh, like in a 9-pack or something? I don't know, but this casting is so nice. Imagine it in like a rally car culture set with real riders and all those details, that grill, everything is just so cool. Maybe it's not in the basic range anymore because it has that separate spoiler piece on the back, but I'm imagining they could mold that into the body if they really wanted to. I don't know, maybe you guys don't like it. I sure think this casting is cool. I've always kept it in the collection, but we've never seen it again and I've always been surprised by that. But it's maybe a kind of forgotten, kind of long forgotten model. All right, guys. That's what I've got. There's probably more that I'm not thinking of that are in my collection, and there are a kajillion more that I'm sure you can think of. Leave them in the comments below. I want to know what they are, because some of them might be worth pursuing, and we might do a part two feature if we can accumulate a lot more one and dones. Licensed. Let's keep them licensed. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed this Saturday showcase. I got more to come. Thanks, everybody. Bye.